So just had a couple of announcements. All right, so first stream on Twitch. Germinal, G-E-R-M-I-N-A-A-L on Twitch. You can follow right now. But I will uh, make uh, I will stream for the first time on Tuesday at 12 Eastern time. So you can catch me there. Second, um, next video next week, uh, I will it will be on Anarchy by Malatesta. Um, links will be in the description or can be linked right now in this chat. If you want to read like the physical uh, the online copy, it's free. If you want a physical copy, I, I printed a couple of them and I will send some. I will send some uh, by mail if some of you want them. Um, I'm sending it to patrons to patrons uh, who donate a uh, ten dollars or more per month. Um, so if you want to support me, you can go on. Uh, it's like it's just a little. It's like a little booklet. It's like a little pamphlet. It's like staple bound. Nothing. Nothing too crazy. But uh, yeah, if you want, like I, I'm giving it to the people who are who have been on Patreon for a while. And if you want to be, if you want to get, get it, if you want to give, give ten dollars or more on Patreon, um, and then unsubscribe, then I'll, I'll, I'll send you one. And um, yeah, don't miss out. Next week's stream, it will have Anarch, uh, Daniel from the channel Anarch who will be there, uh, which is going to be a lot of fun. I'm very excited for that. And aside from that, I think that's it in terms of announcements. That's something I learned by reading, uh, what's what's the name? Um, Fragments of an, uh, of an Anarchist Anthropology. The whole idea of like, or like the the slogan of uh, of the IWW, uh, like building uh, the like building a new world in the shell of the old. It's the whole idea that you can build um, counter counter powers within society right now, um, and the whole idea is that if society or if you know everything crumbles, you can rely on those uh, on these uh, counter powers. Um, and all those institutions that we already built within older institutions. There's there's examples of those. You know, uh, when you when you build community gardens, for example, that's that's a kind of of movement in the like uh, community building and 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 institutions that you can fall back to once the uh, once the old old world falls, if it ever does. What I was talking about was um, you know building. From what I understand, and maybe I'll be wrong, and I'll I'll be learning from this. We will read together, and we'll learn together. So, what is prefigurative politics? Prefigurative politics are the modes of organization and social relationships that strive to reflect the future society being sought by the group. According to Karl Boggs, who coined the term, the desire is to embody within the ongoing political practice of a movement those forms of social relations, decision-making, culture, and human experience that are the ultimate goal. Besides this, besides this definition, Leach also gave light to the definition of the concept, stating that the term refers to a political orientation based on the premise that the ends a social mo movement achieves are fundamentally shaped by the means it employs, and that, movement sh and that movement should therefore do their best to choose means that embody or prefigure the kind of society they want to bring about. Prefiguratism is the attempt to enact prefigurative politics. So it's a very uh, anarchist would would like uh, the whole prefigurative politics. The whole idea that the the means and ends are like linked, um, are inherently linked. One of the reasons why they they reject uh, state um, state uh, like a worker state, in other words, um, because. If your ends is to have no state, then the the means by which you get that end needs to be without a state as well. History. Uh, Boggs was writing in the 1970s about revolutionary movements in Russia, Italy, Spain, and the U.S. New Left. The, con the concept of prefiguration was further applied by Sheila Ro Robotham to the women's movement of the, seven the 60s and 70s by Winnie Breen's to the U.S. Students uh, Students for a uh, Democratic Society (SDS) and by John L. Hammond of the Portuguese Revolution, the politics of prefiguration rejected the centrism and vanguardism of many of the groups and political parties of the, of the '60s. It is both a political of creation, a politics of creation, and one of breaking with hierarchy. Bryan's wrote, "The term prefigurative politics." may be recognized in counter, uh, in counter institutions, demonstrations, and the attempt to embody personal 
and anti-hierarchical values in politics. Participatory dem democracy was central to prefigurative politics. The crux of pre prefigurative politics imposed substantial tasks, the central one being to create and sustain within the, li the, the live practice of the movement relationships and political forms that prefigured and embodied the desired society. For Brains, prefigurative politics centers on participatory democracy, understood as an on ongoing opposition to hierarchical and centralized organization that requires a movement that develops and establishes relationships and political forms that prefigure the egalitarian and democratic society that it seeks to create. Furthermore, she sees prefigurative politics as strictly connected to the notion of community, referring to it as a network of relationships that are more direct, more personal, and more total than the formal, abstract and instrumental relationships that are embedded in, con in contemporary state and society. That ties in a lot with uh, the whole idea of uh, art that 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 links that uh, that speaks to a community and that bonds the community together. And yeah, nobody B uh, build an anarchist society in the shell of capitalism. Not super easy, but it's not it's not doing it like on a broader scale. It's doing it on a community scale and building those. Uh, and the whole idea of prefigurative co uh, of uh, politics is also that once things crumble down or or if things fall, you have the the communities and the the kind of systems, if you want to call it that, uh, that that you built with like through prefigurative politics to to lay back on. So you already have those links with community that you can uh, that you can use to you know to build something better. Anarchists around the turn of the 20th century clearly embraced the principle that the means used to achieve any end must be consistent with that end, though they apparently did not use the term prefiguration. For example, James Guillaume, a comrade of Mikhail Bakunin, wrote, "How could one wa want an, egalit an equalitarian and free society?" free society to, uh, to issue from authoritarian organization. It is impossible. One of the greatest examples during the 20th century is the regard is in this regard is the communismo libertario, libertarian communism society organized by anarcho syndicalists such as the CNT, uh, or in English, the National Confederation of Labor for a few months during the Spanish Civil War. Workers took collective control of the means of production on a decentralized level and used massed mass self uh, communication as a counter power counter power in order to give useful information on a wide range of options going from vegetarian cooking to the treatment of sexually transmitted diseases the concept of prefiguration later came to, to be more uh, to be used more widely especially in relation to the movements of for participatory democracy it has especially been applied to italian uh, italian autonom autonomism in the 60s and the U.S. anti-nuclear movement of the 70s and 80s and the anti-globalization movement at the turn of the 21st century. Yeah, here, uh, historically, uh, uh, National Confederation of Labor, like the uh, historically um, unions were a good way of prefiguring, um, prefiguring these, uh, uh, this society. Uh, you create institutions and 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 links and communities within uh within like broader capitalist institutions so that when those broader capitalist institutions fail uh for example as it did in spanish civil war you can go back to the you can you know you can rely back to unions to do it a uh, union is just one example um and before that back then unions weren't uh you know uh weren't as stale as many unions are today uh, they were much more uh, combative and much more radical in their demands and uh, in this case they were they were a means through which you could just take control of the, control of the means of production as they did um, also there were there were uh, like um, unions could also um, back then they had i know in, in in paris i don't remember the name of those institutions, but they bought huge buildings. I don't know if they built them, but I know they had them. And within these buildings, they could, they, give, they gave classes, they gave um, a place for to help people found, find work. They gave uh, like classes to learn how to do uh, different uh, different work, but also classes on more radical action and radical theory. Um, one day I'll find the, the, the word for it and I'll, uh, Maybe some of you know what I'm talking about. 
let's call them houses of the people. I feel like that's a, that would be a good term for them. I don't remember. Anyway, but yeah, those, those kinds of institutions, if, if there's a civil war as there was in Spain, you can, you can fall back on them and not find yourself to be completely alone or in a loosely connected community, but you find a community that's strongly like linked with already systems to communicate and already, um, plans on how to, to, to go about and how to take decisions, uh, together as a community, instead of having to, when it happens, having to, 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 to figure out how to do it. No, uh, Marco, they weren't libraries. Uh, hold on. Let me, I'll, I'll, uh, uh, there you go. Let me find them. Hold on. Um, I think Pelloutier was a good, Fernand Pelloutier. Hold on, let me find. There you go. Bourse du Travail. Hey, we're, we're reading a lot of Wikipedia today. Fernand Léonce Emile Pelloutier was a French anarchist and syndicalist. He was the leader of the Bourse du Travail, a major French trade union from uh, 1895 until his death in 1901. He was succeeded by Yves Tau. In 1902, the Bourse du Travail merged with the Confédération Générale du Travail. La CGT, which I think is the CNT in French. Uh, Pelletier's theory was exceptionally important for the, uh, to the revolutionary syndicalism movement in Italy that appeared towards the end of the 19th century, and he, and he is a f source of major influence in this regard for Georges Sorel, both uh, not to be confused with uh, George Soros, though uh, apparently they're both uh, very much so left-leaning. Both saw the socialist movement as divided uh, between these uh, those supporting the pol political action of parties and those supporting direct action. Perspectives on prefigurative politics. Anthropologist David Graeber in Fragments of an Anarchist Anthropology described the prefigurative politics of those at the uh, 1999 Seattle WT WTO protest. We were talking earlier about Fragments of an Anarchist Anthropology. When protesters in Seattle chanted, this is what democracy looks like, they meant to be uh, they meant to be taken literally in the best tradition of direct action they not only confronted a certain form of power exposing its mechanisms and attempting literally to stop it in its tracks they did it in a way which demonstrated why the kind of social relations on which it is based were ne uh, were unnecessary this is why all the condescending remarks about the movement being dominated by a bunch of dumb kids with no coherent ideo ideology completely missed the mark the diversity was a function of the decentralized form of organization, and this organization was the movement's ideology. According to Adrian Kurtz, the practice of prefigurative politics or prefiguratism can be defined as a way of engaging in social change activism that seeks to bring about this other world by means of planting the seeds of the society of the future in the toil and the soil of today's prefiguratism, prefiguratism, <laughs> prefigurativism is a way uh, is a way of showing what a world without the tyranny of the present might look like it is a way of finding hope but not escapism in the realms of possibility something that words and theories alone cannot provide as a form of activism prefiguratism highlights the idea that your means match the ends that uh, you can expect it highlights that social structures enacted in the here and now in the small confines of our organizations institutions and rituals mirror the wider social structures we can expect to see in pre uh, in post-revolutionary future additionally darcy k leach wrote in the wiley blackwell encyclopedia of social and political movements that for much of its history the prefigurative impulse was only characteristic of the beginnings uh, beginning stages of a rebellion and faded as the movement became more centralized from the 60s onward however the approach has become both more clearly articulated and more widespread, such that one can now identify a stable prefigurative tendency or wing in a wide range of movement, movements around the world, most notably in women's environmental, autonomous, peace, and indigenous rights movement movements, and on a more global scale, in the movements against neoliberal globalization. Boggs analyzed three common patterns of decline in the prefigurative movement, which are the following. Jacobin Jacobinism, in which po uh, popular forms are repressed or, or their uh, sovereignty usurped by a centralized re revolutionary authority. Spontaneism, a strategic par a paralysis caused paro parochial or anti-political inclinations inhibit the creation of broader structures or of effective coordination. And corporativism, 
corporativism, which occurs when an oligarchic stratum of activists is co-opted, leading them to abandon the movement's originally rad radical goals in order to serve their own interests in maintaining power. Examples of prefigured political programs, the global uh, Baha Baha'i faith community strives to realize a model society by developing a pattern of community life and administrative systems in ways which increasingly embody the uh, principles contained in its principles and teachings, which include the oneness of mankind, equality of the sexes, and harmony of science and religion. Several authors have written about the community's grassroots praxis as a living experiment in how, the progressive, how to progressively in, uh, instantiate religious or spiritual teachings in the real world. The Community Land Trust model provides a method of uh, providing cooperatively owned resident-controlled resident permanent housing outside of the speculative market. In Argentina, the occupation and recuper recuperation of factories by workers such as Zanon, the, the organizing of many of the unemployed workers' movements, and the creation of popular neighborhoods' assemblies reflect the participants' desire for horizontal horizontalism, which includes equal distribution of power among people and the creation of new social relationships based on dignity and freedom. The occupation movements of 2011 in Egypt and the Arab world, in Spain and in the United States, embodied elements of prefiguration, explicitly in the case of Occupy Wall Street and the spin-off in occupations around the United States. They envisaged creating a public space in the middle of American cities, the political dialogue and, uh, and achieve for the political dialogue and achieved some of the uh, attributes of community in providing free food, libraries, medical care, and a place to sleep. In Spain, the 15M uh, movements and the ta and Take the Square movements organized themselves and stood up for a real democracy, a democracy no longer tailored to the greed of the few, but to the needs of the people. The Black Panther Party of the United States led a variety of community uh, social programs from the early 1960s, which sought to realize the party's 10-point program. Programs included free breakfast for children, uh, community health clinics, and after-school programs and liberation schools that focused on black history, writing skills, and political science. What began as a, rebel a rebellion of the Zapatista Army of National Liberation, um, the EZLN, in, 19 in 1994, quickly morphed into a social movement that criticized both national and global power structures and looked for the empowerment of local communities through everyday practices of de facto autonomy. After negotiations with a state failed, uh, with the state failed regarding indigenous rights and culture, the Zapatistas proceeded to develop their own structures of self-government, autonomous education, healthcare, justice, and agrarian and economic relations, among other transformative practices. This movement continues to raise important issues such as the role of culture and identity in popular moralization, social spaces for organi or, or organizing, the possibility of rede redefining power from below, and moreover have posed self-reflective questions about conventional defi definitions of politics, Western positivist epistemologies, and, above, and about the need of decolonizing research in general and, and in oppressed communities in particular. That was it. That was it. I really like this last uh, paragraph, um, especially in terms of... Uh, because we talked about that before, social uh, social spaces for organizing. Some people call it like the third places and all that. This is a very uh, popular uh, in terms of urban planning and in terms of uh, community building. Right now, it's popular. The rest is still very like important and all. Um, but to to do all of this, very often you need like a space for the community. Uh, think of the Black Panther Party with uh, you know health clinics, after-school programs, liberation schools, like all these things, you need a place to do them. Uh, you need third places, places for the community to um, to get together. The Bourse du Travail, French for labor exchanges, a French form of, this, uh, of the labor council, were working class organizations that encouraged mutual aid, education, and self-organization among their mem members in the late 19th and earlier, early, early 20th, 20th centuries. Their role, in terms, of, in terms of labor, early Third Republic France was a time of dramatic social and economic change. With the tremendous growth of industrial capitalism in the late last 20, century, uh, 20 years of the 19th century and the continued migration of workers to cities, the traditional system of meeting, of meeting places for those seeking work was overtaxed. 
Skilled and unskilled trades alike had gradually developed systems to match those seeking work with employers, but the legisla uh, legislation of trade unions in 1884 helped formalize these structures. Employers, too, were creating private labor placement offices. The Republican government of Gambetta relied upon the support of worker class, uh, working class voters, and so helped create the first Bourse du Travail under the control of newly legislated labor unions. Socialists and radicals, radicals elected to city offices in some areas made the funding of Bourse du Travail a priority. As the, as the system expanded, radicals and local government, uh, government extended aid. The Loi du 14 mars 1904 mandated that every city of, of over 10,000 inhabitants had to create a bureau de placement, establishing job offices and undercutting employer-run placement and agencies. These government, these government offices were usually placed in the local Bourse du Travail. This is uh, actually contrary to what I understood. I understood, I was in a documentary I watched a while ago, they said that the Bourse du Travail were actually uh, worker funded and funded by the workers. So maybe some of them were, but here it seems to say that they were, uh, they actually came from, uh, the first ones at least were, uh, were funded by uh, the government. With government support came government regulation. While there was no legal obligation for the state or the municipality to put in place and put in place these buildings, their construction helped both the workers' movement and surveillance of its activities. Business interests and the police saw the formalization of Bourse du Travail as a way to channel the labor movement away from revolutionary change or to keep an eye on those who promoted it. Role in Revolutionary Ideology The ideology behind the explosion of Bourse du in Bourse du Travail popularized the revolutionary syndicalists like Fernand Pelloutier, intended to create in them the key organizational component of radical economic transformation. By acting as future coordinating bodies, facilitating communication between syndicates, unions, the Bourse du Travail would coordinate production and consumption in the absence of both the state and the private, and the private ownership of the means of production. These institutions were central to the notion of revolutionary syndicalism, which dominated, <clears throat> which dominated the Confe Confédération Générale du Travail, France's largest labor federation in the first 20 years of the 20th century. Pelloutier and other revolutionary syndicalists argued that the bourse, the bourse small-scale, local, self-made, were the guarantee that the CGT would remain both directly democratic and revolutionary. They saw labor organizations as interconnecting in three ways. A national federation, uniting each specific union, traditional craft or trade unions, a national federation of all unions, in this case the CGT, and all local workers across union and political boundaries, united in the Bourse du Travail. Supporters of the Bourse movement uh, believed the structure last should become the most important for a form of workers' association. Um, cultural, the cultural role of les Bourses du Travail. The other major change of this period was the Republican promulg promul promulgation of la laic laws. Laic? That means uh, secular. Taking education out of the hands of the Catholic Church and eventually taxing and regulating church institutions. Bourse du Travail, like civil marriage or lay, f or lay funerals, filled a communal role once played by local parishes. Bourse du Travail were centers of working class culture. Almost everyone contained, lend uh, contained lending libraries, classrooms, meeting halls, and theaters. Family and community celebrations took place here, away from the church, and did, uh, as did classes and political, dis uh, and political discussions, formal meetings, and light entertainment. The Bourse du Travail building are still often the locations of theaters and concert venues. Now let's look at the history of Bourse du Travail. Birth in the Third Republic. The idea of French labor exchanges far predates the institutions. In, 19, in 1790, at the height of the French Revolution, an abortive Bourse du Travail was established in Paris. The Loi Le Chapelier in 1791 outlawed this and any other labor organization, and despite the brief legalization during the Second Empire, uh, Second Republic, unions remained illegal until 1884. Adolphe, Adolphe Lelier presented, uh, presented in 1845 a similar project which he called the Bureau Central des Ouvriers. The idea of creating a labor exchange, Bourse du Travail, is credited to the, credited, credited to the economist Gustave de Molinari, in 1845. In February 1851, 
François Joseph Ducou, Ducou, that's a that's a very French name, submitted a bill to the Legislative Assembly that proposed to establish a state-run labor exchange in Paris. His project was also submitted to the Paris Municipal Commission. The project was abandoned, but later revived in 1875 and 1883, and eventually came into force in 1886. In 1875, workers petitioned the Paris Municipal Council to establish a Bourse du Travail, which was rejected. Labor organizations had existed underground or by other names, but their new status led to an explosion of radical activity. The French revolutionary tradition was evolving into the economic sphere of union organi or organizing, rather than the seizure of power. Ex exemplified by Auguste Blanqui. The first Bourse du Travail in Paris was begun in 1887. A building on the rue uh, Jean-Jacques Rousseau, J.J. Rousseau, was donated by the State Socialist Municipal Council, and a second, one, one, a second on rue de Château d'Eau was created in 1892. By this time, there were 14 Bourses de Travail established around France by 1902-83, with a further 75 created in 1914. Fédération des Bourses du Travail and the CGT. The Fédération des Bourses de Travail, uh, Fédération, Federation of Labor Exchanges, was created in 1892 at the Congress of Saint Etienne by Fernand Pelloutier to federate each city's workers' organizations. It was first led by Bernard Rezet, 1892, then Rieu Cordier, then Fernand Pelloutier, 1895, and from 1901 to 1918 by Georges Yvetot. The Federation of Labor Exchanges merged in 1895 with the Federation, Fédération Nationale des Syndicats, Na National Federation of Trade Unions, which had been created in 1886, giving rise to the Confederation, Confédération Générale du Travail, CGT, which was dominated by a revolutionary syndicalist strategy until 1921. The Federation merged with the CGT in 1902. Many of the leaders of the Bourse du Travail went on to, went on to lead the CGT, and the FBT was a co-equal partner with individual unions in the CGT's founding. Bourses have, bourse have thus been called the Mère des Syndicats, the mother of unions, for their role. Structurally, individual bourses com comprised the building itself and its social, education, and other practical resources, and the bourse as a council of local unions. Union paid, unions paid a fee to join the, the bourse, though CGT-affiliated unions were often exempted. And, and sent representatives to regular meetings of all the local unions. The administration of the Bourse was by elected representatives. Contrary to Peruzzi's vi vision, these representatives came from a variety of ide ideological backgrounds with both, which both represented the local political leanings of unions, but also the wider political left in the area. In many towns, there were, a, there were socialist municipal councils and mayors, either in Jules Guess, uh, Guess's French Workers' Party, the Jaurès saint possible Poss possibilists uh, of the French section of the Workers' International, or independent reformers of the Bryant Group. This leaves aside the constellation of syndicalist-focused socialists, like Jean Alman's Revolutionary Socialist Worker Par Workers' Party, cooperativists and individual anarchist workers who sometimes played active roles in their local bourse. In most places, anarcho-syndicalism was but one small faction in both the bourse and the CGT, And so the Bourse took on roles of a reformist or Marxist or strictly trade unionist character which, pre which presaged, presaged the CGT split. Rise of the PCF and decline of the Bourse. The birth of the French uh, Communist Party began the decline of the Bourse du Travail movement. The CGT, which had regrouped the individual organizations, was swept up in the ideological tumult tumult of the post-war years. It became, like much of the French left, dominated by the communists' the communists' ideological vision, which sought the loose federalism of revolutionary syndicalism as a, re a reason of, for the failure of the 1918-1919 to 1919 strike wave. In 1921, the CGT revised its structure, eliminating the local Bourse de Travail as constituent organization of the Union and replacing them with a network of Union Locale. From here on, the CGT followed a British and American model of local trade-specific unions federated into a single national structure. A split eventually into three federations created a French section of the Workers' International, uh, SFIO, SFIO, dominated CGT, the Union, United General Confederation of Labor, uh, or the CGTU, where communists cohabited, cohabited with anarchists and revolutionary trade unionists, and the Revolutionary Trade Unionist General Confederation of Labor, 
the CGT SR in 1923 when the communists gained control, uh, gained control of the CGTU. The CGT and the CGTU reunited in 1936 and remained close to the French Communist Party. You guys better all remember that and take notes. You'll be, uh, you'll be tested eventually. Predictable these, uh, predictably, these often bitter party divisions in the labor movement, movement made the local and inclusive vision of the Bourse impossible. The Bourse du Travail survived often as a single organization union hall, while the history of splits in the French labor movement saw the buildings pass from one hand to another, revert to municipalities, or disappear entirely. All right, today, buildings and communities. Bourse du Travail buildings and institutions remain in most large French cities. Many are headquarters of the local unions, which are federated into the Confédération Nationale du Travail, or of other unions which split from the French Communist Party. Many bourses were central as places of organizing and resistance during, the May, during May 1968. In some places, municipal governments have retained ownership, or community and, and radical groups have taken, taken them over. Some have simply been sold off for office space or torn down. In Lille, one of the earliest bus remains as the home of five unions and a radical community center, and came, uh, came center stage in the resistance to the deportation of undocumented immigrants when 460 sans-papiers, that means without papers, staged a 30-day hunger strike to oppose government policies. Ideology? The Bourse de Travail concept has been central to anarcho-syndicalists across the globe, and the model greatly influenced council communism and other forms of left communism. Anarchists of many stripes point to the, bureau, uh, the Bourse du Travail as an example of a direct, democratic, small-scale federalist institutions, institutional structure. Outside France, the Bourse du Travail idea was exported along with French imperialism. The F FBTP, FBT's full name was actually Fédération des Bourses du Travail de France et des Colonies, though in practice this meant there, there were sections in the French settler-dominated parts of Algeria. These declined with their French counterparts and did not survive the anti-colonial struggle. In sub-Saharan Africa, bourses de travail were implemented in two ways. In French-controlled regions, labor unions were organized by the CGT in the 1930s and 1940s. Their labor halls were strictly uh, styled bourses de travail, some of which remain as centers of union activity. The rulers of Belgian Congo created a bourse de travail at uh, Katanga in 1910 as a state-controlled hiring hall in an attempt to lure labor to, labor to areas of plant industrial, mostly mining, con concentration. Attempts by, attempts by local officials to recast this cynically created employment agency into a more worker-run operation suggest that the idea of Bourse du Travail never lost its syndicalist connotations. So that was Bourse du Travail, though it's... Uh, some of them are really nice. They, they also had art. A lot, of, a lot of the art, a lot of worker art in general were uh, murals. But yeah, from from the um, from the documentary I saw, the Bulls Highway were a lot cooler. They they probably are a lot cooler, and here they're just giving a very uh, how do I say this? Like a more like um, factual. It was less narr narrativized, let's say. The way it was narrativized sounded really really cool. Um, not that it doesn't sound cool, it still sounds really cool. But the whole idea that, uh, from what I remember, it was worker-funded, worker-run, um, you would get classes, libraries, it was a place for to, to have uh, theater, to have art exhibitions, it was a, a really, really, really nice uh, place to, con to, to get together, a communal place. I'll, I'll just finish off by... Uh, Sounds like heaven. Yeah, it, it did sound really cool. Uh, it sounds like you're, you know, when we're talking about third places, it sounds like a, like a, the ideal third place. It's not a cafe. It's not even like a place where you need to go to like buy something. It's really a place where you just hang out with, you know, like-minded leftist people. <laughs>